Lying still in the shallows, Puck sleeps with half of her brain awake. She has to consciously breathe or she would drown. While his mum snoozes, Janet is watching Samu. She sees something she's never seen before. Samu joins up with one of Puck's granddaughters. The young female appears to be giving him fishing lessons. Look, she's got the little fish and she's like... Younger. She's like Look at knocking fish. little Samu with her little fish in her mouth. Oh, and she's letting it go in ahead of her again. She let it go. She's catching it. It does look like she's showing him. She is repeatedly catching and dropping an injured fish in front of Samu. She keeps grabbing it very closely in front of him, like, this is how you grip it. It almost looks like she's showing him how to grip it. It's the first time Janet has ever seen behavior like this. That was the closest I've seen to teaching so far. What is so exceptional is that the young female appears to be consciously showing Samu how to catch a fish. Examples of teaching in the animal kingdom are very, very rare. If Puck's granddaughter really is teaching Samu, it's strong evidence of how self-aware and intelligent dolphins are. Another four weeks pass. And there's a familiar face. Puck's wayward son, India, is back. The pull of the family is too strong. For the moment, Puck tolerates his return, letting him hang out with the family. Young Samu plays with his older brother while he can. But the day will soon come when India will have to go for good. Winter has returned to Shark Bay. The waters are cooling and the tiger sharks are finally leaving. I really like May because things are calming down. The sharks are gone and the males and females actually have some nice interactions. They're not. The males aren't harassing the females like they do six to eight months out of the year. With the big sharks finally gone, Samu has survived the most dangerous first few months of his life. Seeing Samu growing up so strong and independent bodes well for his future. He is already showing all the signs of becoming one of the bay's top males. But one day, he too will have to leave the loving companionship of the beaches. At 33 years old, Puck's long reign of the beaches will soon come to an end. This wonderful dolphin has taught Janet more than any other. A wise and gentle mother, Puck's shown her children how to survive in the dangerous waters of Shark Bay, and shown us the richness of dolphin family lives, if we just choose to look beneath the surface. Making the dolphins of Shark Bay was a real challenge for the British and Australian film crew. 
dolphins are capable of swimming at speeds of over 20 miles per hour. Quick-witted and elusive, the team were up against it from the very start. To tell Puck and Samu's remarkable story, director Nick Stringer decided the only way to do it was to use a miniature high-definition camera called a pole cam. Nobody's really ever told the story of a family of dolphins before. It was a very ambitious vision and probably one of the biggest challenges I'd ever faced. Getting some nice stuff out of sea class, but so I'm really happy about that. Yeah, it's going really well. The little camera's working. Using the pole cam was a two-man operation. The camera, no larger than a water bottle, was operated by Ben Cunningham. Live images of the dolphins were then fed back to Nick, who was watching on a small monitor. Tilt down, turn right, Ben. Tilt down and left. He was then able to guide Ben towards the dolphins. That's a beautiful shot. Look at that. But the team didn't have it all their own way. The filming was immensely challenging. Shark Bay is one of the windiest places in Australia. And when we did get out on the water, visibility was often terrible. And the dolphins were very difficult to get close to. Our patience was severely tested. 10 meters, 12 o'clock, roll it. roll it. The team's biggest challenge was trying to film young Samu. Swimming away, just out of range, I think. Got it. He appeared to be playing games with the crew. Uh, roll it. Coming tantalizingly close to the boat before swimming away. I'd go behind. Go on behind. There were times when I thought it was going to be an impossible task. Ooh, five meters, maybe. Four. Come this way. Did you? Could you see that? When Puck finally brought Samu up to the boat, it was a magical moment. Ten meters, eleven o'clock. Roll it. Roll it. Eight meters. Still down and left. Here it comes. Yes. Got it. It's coming in. Yes. Getting them here on a day like this is just what we've been waiting for, so it's been worth the wait, definitely. Yeah, it all seems to be coming together at the end of the shoot. That was our point. With shots of young Samu in the bag, the team moved north to Peron to try and film the hydroplaning dolphins. It was hard enough trying to follow the dolphins from the boat, but the crew's next task was to try and follow them on foot. It was to become the wildlife filming equivalent of an army boot camp. Getting the hydroplaning was a real key part of the film because it's such a dynamic and a fantastic bit of behaviour. The crew had just arrived at Peron after a long drive. Can you see that? There's dolphin. Dolphins. Right down there. To spot dolphins immediately was really unexpected. Come on, Ben, let's go. Let's go quick, quick. Ben and Nick try and catch up with the dolphins, but soon find themselves chasing them up and down the beach. By late morning, they fail to capture a single shot. And the only wildlife around is a growing number of flies. The flies are unbelievable. They're such a pain. You just don't know when the action is going to start. It could just like, happen like that. To help the team out, 
Biologists Eric and Shay set up a lookout high above them on the cliffs. We're really able to spot pretty much anywhere in this little beach here where the dolphins are and basically tell Nick and Ben to hurry up and run over there and see if they can get a shot of it. Uh, it's stifling already. Uh, it's going to be about 35, 40 today, I reckon. Then up on the cliff, Eric spots some movement. Oh, here comes one, just around the point by the... See where the birds are flying off? She's really close in, so she might do it. I'm going to let them know. Reggae is just coming around the uh, point by the birds. Um, she's really close to the shore, so she looks like she might start hydroplaning. I'll do that. Let's see if we can get it, come on. Normally, natural history shoots are a game of patience. This one is turning into a chase in 40 degree heat. Oh, there she goes, she's getting it. They've already run more than five miles this morning. Oh, this sounds hard work. She's starting to, she's starting to do it, she's starting to hydroplane. She's really close, I don't know if you guys can see her, but. Okay, uh, staying clear on it, over. What's happening, Nick? It looks like she's looking for fish, and what they seem to be doing is herding them away from the rocks towards the beach so that they can get them up a hydroplane. Oh, that's a, that's a first for us. There she goes. Oh, look at that. She's just come up on the beach. Can you see that? Gosh, it's incredible. It's incredible to be so close to it. Oh, that's a big one. And her calf's just right there watching her. Yeah, she just got that big mullet. She's taking it out deeper now and chomping on it. That's what I really love about this job. Just when they thought it was over, Hi, Janet. a radio call comes in from the other end of the beach. Nick, we've got Cha-Cha and Flamenco coming towards you guys. Okay, uh, which side of the bay are they coming in over? They are straight out from where my hand is pointing now. Okay, we're going to run to the other end of the beach right now. With the camera and equipment weighing over 25 kilos, it's hard work. If they're not fit by the end of this. <laughs> they're chasing something. He's yep. chasing. Going, Ben. Coming up. They consume over five liters of water each. As the daylight fades, they try to grab the last few shots. They've run more than 15 miles. I think my calves are growing, and uh, my thirst is great, and the flies are swarming, but, you know, it's about the dolphins and we're getting some great stuff. I am not going up the beach again, you guys. I didn't realize I'd be marathon training. Well, uh, actually getting to the end of the day now, and um, we had an extraordinary day. Uh, just, we've seen, gosh, um, at least five or six, seven big chases of fish. Yeah, we captured some really, really nice stuff, I think. <laughs> I'm not surprised. Oh, I've never swallowed one. <laughs> I was looking at them on your lips, James. I couldn't even see your lips. <laughs> We're not out of food at all. <laughs>